One of the first steps in any fMRI preprocessing pipeline is a step known as slice time and correction. Now recall that when we acquire a volume of the brain, we are acquiring a series of discrete slices. It does not happen instantaneously. And each slice is acquired at a slightly different time than the other slices. So for example, there may be an acquisition order where each slice is acquired sequentially or where each slice is acquired every other slice, but the point is that each slice is temporally distinct from the others. So in order to rectify this, we need to do some interpolation in order to alter the time course and shift it so it's as though each slice was acquired at the exact same time. To show this example, I'm going to open up a time series for one of these images. And if I start at the very beginning here, and I start at the very bottom slice, which in our scanner is the first slice that's acquired, we acquire in ascending interleaved order, and I start scrolling up just by tapping the up button. Notice the change in this number right here. This is the actual time at which the slice is acquired. So notice at the very beginning slice, it's time zero. Now because it's interleaved, we're going every other slice, and once we get to the top, we then go back and we acquire all those other slices. So the next slice is actually just over one half of the TR or repetition time. In this case, we have a TR of two seconds. So as we go up, you should see every other one increasing at a rate of about 0.057 seconds. So recall that I said the TR is about two seconds. Well, it is two seconds. If we take 0.57 and we multiply it by the number of slices in this data set, which is about 35, uh, due to rounding errors, oh sorry, 0.057 times 35, there's a little bit of rounding error, but it does add up to two seconds. Just to show you that I'm not lying. So the point here is each slice is acquired at a different time and slice time and correction will try to interpolate the time course of each and shift it so that it is as though they're acquired at the exact same instant. Now to do this, we have a command called 3D T shift. Now you can get the help just by typing in 3D T shift and no other commands. It's also helpful to pipe it to the command less so that you can scroll through the help more easily. Notice that there are different options here, such as you can override the TR stored in the data set. You can set what slice you want to align to. In this case, we're going to align to slice zero. And the prefix is the name of the data set that you want to output. What label do you want to attach to it? And there are other options that you can look at as well. Uh, most important is this set of interpolation methods. Now, higher level interpolations, they're slower, but they give you a better approximation for the interpolated time course for each slice. And lastly, T-Pattern allows you to specify the acquisition at which you acquired slices. So for example, was it sequential? Was it alternating every other slice? Was it ascending, descending? and so forth. Note that this is something you need to write down when you're at the scanner. This isn't something that you can necessarily find out from the header information. You may be able to, but it is much safer to note that at the time of scanning. Okay, so let me see what I have here. I'm going to be working with this device underscore zero degree data set. So my full command is going to be 3D T shift the slice I want to align to, or T0, is going to be the very first slice here. The T pattern, or the acquisition pattern, is going to be Alt plus. This says that we start at slice 0 and we acquire every other slice. Once you get to the top for, say, all your even slices, go back and acquire all of your odd numbered slices. Quintic is an interpolation method. It has its own 
flag. So there's no need to say dash interpolation, then quintic. Just dash quintic is fine. Prefix the name of the output data set. I'm going to call this uh, device zero dig t shift. And then finally, the very last argument is going to be the name of the data set itself, which is device underscore zero degrees plus rig. Note that I can leave it as is. I can add on head if I need to. AFNI can figure it out either way, as long as you have this plus or rig suffix, which tells AFNI what space it's in. In this case, we haven't done any normalization, so it's still in its original space. Now hit enter. It takes a few seconds to think. And as you can see, it's a very quick process. There's no need really to do any lower interpolation methods, such as the linear, which might lead to more smoothing in your time course. Now I'm going to open up both of these data sets side by side. I'm going to open up a new window over here. So this one on the right is going to have the T-shifted data set. The one on the left is going to have the unaltered or raw data set. So I'm going to open up some time courses for each. Go to time zero here. And also to slice zero. So type, click on the very bottom and make sure that this says at zero. And same thing over here. By the way, I'm typing MM to reduce the matrix size and then A for auto scale. It's kind of a tick at this point. But again, so we're at time point zero and we're at slice zero. Okay, now recall for the raw data set, when I go up each slice, it is going to be going up by fractions of a TR since each slice is acquired at a slightly different time. But notice at the same time over here, as I'm increasing in slices, the time point remains zero. This is because it has been slice time corrected. More details can be found on the blog about how to visualize what slice timing actually does through some graphs that I've stolen from other websites and more of a discussion on why slice timing is useful and a few papers which have discussed the pro and cons of performing slice time correction.